None of us deserve it. None of us deserve it, Lord, but you have made this possible. Your gift of salvation, your gift of salvation, the love of the Father sending you down has made this body of Christ able to come together. Lord, we dedicate this to you, and Holy Spirit, we ask that you take over. And again, we bind the powers of the kingdom of darkness that would try to enter that would try to hinder later in Jesus Christ's name, Lord. Open our eyes, our eyes spiritually to your truth. Open our ears to hear you spiritually and to understand. And Lord, let us hear the truth of what you're sending down in Jesus Christ's name as you intend it to be heard and understood with no hindrances of the kingdom of darkness in Jesus Christ's name. And Lord, these things are not meant to cause fear as in fear that terrifies Fear to prepare to prepare us, to propel us into action in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, Holy Spirit, you take over in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Uh, first, before we start, I want to introduce you to Alfredo and Judith. They're part of our lovely Jesus ministry, part of the prayer team. So I've kept them hid until the Lord said to reveal them because people are targets and let's keep them hid as long as we can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But now you have a face to know. Pray for them. They have helped, helped me mightily in a, in a true godly way. Hallelujah. As far as even talk to them, I discerned with the three questions <laughs> over and over and over. Hallelujah. And I even had the honor of visiting them and meeting them face to face before they were brought fully into this ministry. I mean, they were brought in, but I was able to bring them into deeper. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm very, they're very, very humble people. All right. With that being said, we are here to discuss the three days of darkness and it's coming. We know it is. It's in scripture. I'm going to read Amos 8, 9. And I had the KJV. Um, and I, I didn't have any scriptures marked because when I mark them, he always goes somewhere else. Just so, <laughs> just so you'll know. That's why you just be open to let the Lord lead. This is one, and there's another place where it talks about at noon, darkness coming at noon. But this is one most people come on most commonly known and I'm still in Matthew Lord all right here's go Amos 8 9 and it shall come to pass in that day saith the Lord God that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in the clear day so at noon the three days of darkness is going to ascend, descend. Now, we know that everything follows a pattern through this. God's pattern. His holy pattern. So, for those of you that do research, I'm going to... It is 12 o'clock noon the Lord is talking about. But even... And which one? Well, that's, that's going to be his. Even though in Bible days... Noontime was considered 3 p.m. But when you study the scripture, the darkness started in the sixth hour, putting it back at noon. And since time has progressed, noon is now 12 o'clock, 12 p.m., considered in most places, which again makes the word of God true. It is going to be at noon. The scriptures for that. Where it talks about at noon. Wrong book. <laughs> Need to have scripture. Where it talks about Jesus being on the cross. On the sixth hour the darkness fell. Which would put that at noon. Our time today. That is in Mark 15, 33. Matthew 27, 45. And Luke 23, 44. And he was on the cross but he was in the darkness for three hours. 
representing the three days of darkness, the pattern, the same but different. And that's what the Lord does, the same but different. But in this, this is his love and his mercy. This is his great love for saying, look, I'm going to, this is my paraphrase. I'm going to be sending this. I'm going to do this. So I'm warning you in advance. So for those of you that wanted the scripture, that's where it talks about the sixth hour to ninth hour, he was on the cross. So that's 12 to 3 p.m. Noon being 3 p.m. his day. But the darkness started at 12 and 12 is our noontime. The question I have so many people ask is, how can noon fall at one time on the earth? I went to prayer about that. When you realize there are 24 time zones in this world, man is created. They all come to one point, converge at the North Pole. I mean, at, yeah, at the North Pole. There's no time at the North Pole. The sun sets one day. In one day, it rises and sets one day. And then it's half the year it's dark, half the year it's light. So what we're looking at is that's point zero. But I don't know what time exactly that is because there is no existing time. I'm asking you pray about everything we say and seek the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to point out a few things, but I cannot say this is definitely it. And and there was a lady that mentioned the world clock. The world clock is set on UTC time, Greenwich time. It is considered the place of no hours. Minus, you know, that's a set time. That is a possibility. But with that being said, too, I cannot guarantee say that because I don't know what time the Lord is using for the North Pole. But that's the point where it can start. It can start. When it starts at that point where all time zones are the same, that's what it means. All time zones are the same at the North Pole. So noon is going to be noon everywhere whenever that hits. So it makes the word of God true for every time zone. And that's where our God is. He's truth. He's truth. You can actually do a, do a, a research on that. It says um, all lines of longitude excuse me, are measured from the prime meridian, which by the way is the north and south, the north again being that center, the south being the bottom of the north, and I'm not going into all that right now though, but there are 24 time zones the world is divided into by longitude lines, and they are all converged into one point at the north pole. Therefore, there's no time assigned to the north pole. So you can't say it's 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and when people go there, they just have to try to figure out it's it's really, but the sun rises and sets on one time, one time a year there. I'm not saying that's the day. I'm just saying that gives us a time to look at how it rises and sets. Okay, we're getting a ton of questions right now. We are not taking questions in the chat, okay? I mean, well, I, I just saw a question, let me put it like that. We will try to answer Everything through what we discuss. Now, Alfredo and Judith, you feel free to come in anytime. Um, just so you'll know, we will try to address everything that we know through what the Lord has shared in visions and dreams and even through, through the word of God. Because what is the darkness? The darkness is my understanding from the outer darkness in the abyss, the pit. It, it, I have seen the abyss, and it's like it has the abyss in the very bottom, and, and you pray about all I'm saying. And then to the left and to the right is like outer, and that's where I see the outer darkness. It's alive in a way I can't explain it. It makes your skin crawl. It feels like it runs in and out of your body. If you're in it for a long time, your teeth will gnash. Short experience, not something I want to do. Okay, so with that, 
being said, that is what is going to descend. And we have a description of it where it talks about there'll be weeping and gnashing in the teeth, you know, in Matthew and all. But we're going to go to Exodus 10. This is our most. And we're going to use the scripture before we get into everything, because everything's based on the word of God. This is a judgment from God. And we need to follow the pattern. Um, he's the one pointing it out to me. And then I hear other people saying there's patterns, there's pattern. And that's true because Ecclesiastes 1, 9 tells us. Alfredo, do you have your Bible, sir? Will you look up Ecclesiastes 1, 9 and have it ready for me? Yes. I'll read it read in just a moment. Okay. In ex thank you. Exodus 10. Starting with verse 21. Now, these are the plagues, and I'm going to explain some things about because I went back over, you know, reading and researching. The, you need to, to study all the plagues to understand how God is going to be protecting. All right. In Exodus 10, verse 21 through 23 is all I'm going to read, Lord willing. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, and there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, an act of obedience. Understand, obedience. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. They saw not one another, Neither rose from their place for three days, but all the children of Israel have light in their dwellings. Now they are in the land of Goshen. Would you read that, please, Alfredo? Just give me one minute. I was pulling pulling the, the, the verse, uh, Vicky. Okay. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1, 9? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's um, the thing that had been, it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun that right there and there's another place that confirms that verse too that right there tells you god works in patterns what comes and so we're seeing the pattern again as judgment falls and it's the whole world this time he's bringing darkness he's bringing the plagues he's bringing all these things with the darkness, we're here to discuss it. And I will say the destroyer is falling. But exactly how long, what, just be prepared. Be Have your hearts prepared in Jesus Christ, first and foremost. And if you are a child of God and your life is lining up with the word of God, you have nothing to fear. All right. Holy Spirit, how do you want me to lead this? We know that there is a separation, a distinct separation from the, the Israelites, the Hebrews, the children of God, and the Egyptians, the ones who are serving false gods and are facing the judgment. When you read the other plagues that came, there's 10 in total. For, for example, when the hell and fire and all that falls, hell fire mingle with, is it just hell and fire, I think, here? When it falls, the Hebrew, they were told, basically, you're being told, thank you, thank you, you're being told through scripture how to prepare as far as, as, the things it's going to take you i can't we can't give you everything i'm asking you go to the other scriptures of the plagues and see how the lord handled that my understanding is if you have the use of supernatural electricity instead of just candlelight your animals are going to be protected that's a big question a lot of people says. 
That's my understanding, but I'm still seeking the Lord because I may just have parted the pieces. We all have just pieces and we're trying to put them together with what the Lord and asking the Lord. That's why it's important to call on the Lord. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and shew thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. What does that mean? It says you have to seek the Lord. You know, one person can't get all the answers. It's a body. It's a body. So it takes all of us. What we do know, though, the darkness is coming. And it's coming before a fixed moon. That, that much we know. I'm not going to say definitely which fixed moon. I'm just saying we know that. When um, my recommendation, first and foremost, if you're not sure whether you're going to have candlelight or light, you need to repent. Okay, you have that certainty within your heart and that peace that you're okay. Now, for those of you that have your light or even candlelight and you have unsaved people with you, if you're in candlelight, every you're going to you're going to need to be in prayer. If you're in candlelight, you're going to hear the demons. You're going to hear the enraged fallen angels outside that have been loosed. You're going to hear the mimicking voices. And you're still going to feel even though we're in light, you're still going to feel that there's evil outside. You're going to feel presence of darkness. There's going to be a feeling that even those unsaved inside, those inside are going to not want to leave. My understanding is being inside of candlelight or light does offer them protection, but it doesn't mean they're not going to feel and sense and know. I don't know how far it's going to go, how much, how what, but they are going to know there's something evil outside and they're not one going to want to go out. The only thing that I can really grasp in my heart and my understanding what would cause somebody to want to open that door or open that window is fear for whoever is outside wanting to get in and that most likely is a demon pretending to be grandpa mother your pastor your neighbor you, you understand all of this fixed moon okay everybody keeps asking the fixed moon it means a set moon the lord gave me a dream after three moons the fixed moon is the third moon whenever that third moon is this is a time This is a call to repentance. This is a call to repentance. Because right after it, my understanding again, every word I'm getting is the destroyer comes. This is a call in the darkness, that darkness that's seen, that's felt. There will be those whose hearts will fail for fear. Why? Why? Well, besides, if you have no light, go with just those in total darkness. If you have no light and you're feeling this darkness crawling and you're petrified, if you have no light at all, they're going to appear to some of you, you know, and I'm not saying us, I'm talking about people in general. They're going to make their presence known. And then you have those that, that will hear those million voices, hear those screams and will want to look outside. And the supernatural, if you have never, I mean, you've seen these I've seen pictures of horror movies and stuff. I'm telling you, it's nothing like they really can make themselves look like. They can make themselves look like a beautiful, beautiful, most beautiful person. Angel of light, you know. But they can also show because sin, the effects and causes of sin is worse than anything that man can create. And when you see a, an abundance of that flying out or coming, coming trying to get in, <clears throat> excuse me, it will cause people to lose their mind people to die I have seen people and I know of people that have lost their mind just seeing one what makes you think you're so strong that you can 
withstand seeing all that. It's judgment. Okay, I'm going to refer everybody to the dream about the three moons to darkness. And um, <clears throat> this needs, we need the questions and the chatting to stop right now. You're distracting me. And I don't mean that to be harsh, but that's why we say no open forum. If we open it up to questions, then you can put your questions in. Uh, I got is... to the, the chat, VK, so. Okay, please do that. I'm not trying to be rude. It's just you're, you're distracting, and here's the thing. If you will give us time, we will try to answer all your concerns that we can. It is up to you to do research, too. There are more than, I'm not the only person talking about three fixed moons or three set moons or you need to go back and do the research. Ask the Lord to lead you who it is. I've had more than one dream about and, and words about three moons. So has other people. So that is up to you to get the understanding on that. We're going to prepare you for the darkness. Holy Spirit, lead this. What we do know, there's three days of darkness coming. <clears throat> In that three days of darkness, you have to think about, are you going to be alone? Is there going to be family with you? Or is there going to be friends? Or is somebody going to come in? You need to prepare with food. You need to prepare with water. There's no running to the supermarket. There's no running to the next door neighbor to get a match. Once that darkness sets in, it's in. And there's a whole lot more coming in that darkness than we realized. Because when you realize the time it is, the darkness is bringing in the three days. Of, no, it, the three days of darkness is bringing in the great day of the Lord. It is. When you start pulling scriptures from every location, you pull from Amos, you pull from Zephaniah, you pull from Revelation. When you pull from all that, it's the same. And it's serious. Revelation 6, the great day of the Lord. Many people don't even know what that is. I knew what it was, but I didn't study it much because I was hoping and praying that, you know, the rapture would come first. But I was never led to really study it. In Revelation 6, when that sixth seal opens, many things happen. Revelation 6, starting verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And all this is happening at one time. And the sun became black and sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she's shaken in a mighty wind. 14. And there the heavens departed as a scroll when it rolled together. Every mountain and islands were moved out of place. These things don't necessarily happen all at one time. Why am I saying that? When you break down the scripture, you go to Joel, you go to these other places. This, in my understanding, is actually talking about two different earthquakes. The first earthquake is going to come in the darkness. The last one is coming later. It's judgment. It's being spread out, even though it's right here. Why am I saying, and you take this to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer, because I'm understanding this great earthquake that's going to split and divide and move every mountain and island. This one's coming is going to be great. It's coming at a point in time. And those of you that follow, really follow scripture and the patterns, the Lord can show you. So this is the time we know when the Nephilim are going to be released. This is the time when the fallen angels that were once bound. I just had a dream and I'm praying about whether to share it. Where the stars that fall, some of them are fallen angels. Meteors, stars, and fallen angels. And there is scripture to back that up. And, and those of you who said, well, I don't understand. Remember where it talks about this principalities and powers and rules and darkness. In some of the scripture, it tells you. If I brought, wrote it down. I think it's in my other book, where it actually calls that the powers will be shaken. 
from the heavens. Powers that your fallen angels. So while we're in the darkness and all this is happening, unless Jesus comes beforehand, which my understanding is we're going through the darkness, the powers will be shaken. Those that are bound, ladies, Orion, those two I know, old fallen angels, because in the dream, I saw them fall. They were loosed and, and fell. That's fallen. Meteors are fallen. The great, great fireball comes at this time. And apparently it's not a fireball. So, and that's what's going to, in my understanding, and I'm still praying about it, is what hits the impact and causes a great earthquake. Pray, 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 seek. Now, in the darkness, all this is going on outside. In addition, that's why we're all called to pray. We're all called to pray. We pray for the lost during all this time. You need to have some form of light. Be prepared. If you're not 100% sure of your salvation, if you have anything hidden, any even if you don't forgive yourself, if there's anything, if the least bit concerned, make sure you have candles. It's got to be candlelight, because that's what the Lord has said, candlelight or your supernatural lights. So you need to have candlelights. You need to have some way of lighting that. Candles. I recommend again, get the unscented candles. If you already have candles stockpiled, pray over them. What you're doing is making sure because any scented candle, perfumes and things like that come directly from the Marine Kingdom. The Marine Kingdom deals with makeup, perfume, anything that's considered sedu seducing. And that's where your scents come from, to seduce. Now, I mean, we use it innocently. Well, I used to, don't. But everything you've got to pray because demons can be attached to them. Simply just pray over them. Ask the Lord, is there any that do not need to be used? Because they might be charmed or they might be accursed. And if he says to get rid of it, get rid of it. And if he says just pray over it, you just simply say in the name of Jesus Christ, I break any curses or spells or such like over these um, and any charmed charmed or bewitchment, you do have to go a little further. I deprogram them by cutting the cord, burning the cord, cutting, it's cutting the de demon loose with the fire of God. I command them not to do what they were called to do, cancel the assignment, bind them and throw them in the abyss. It's that simple. In Jesus Christ's name. I do that over anything that comes in this house. I do that in the store when I'm purchasing because I have seen people doing the woohoo wahoo just right there over food and stuff in the grocery store. Yes, they do that. I've seen videos of it. Because this world is evil. It's role. It's this evilness. It's not the people. It's the demons and devils inside of them. So let's always remain focused. It is the demons and devils inside of them. That are controlling these people. Who has sun, who the sun sets free is free indeed. That's who we are. We are free, but they're still in bondage. So make sure you have a source of light, candlelight, matches. Another thing, again, three days worth of food. And if if you even suspect people's going to be coming, other people, they may or may not eat. I don't know because at a time like this, I'm most likely going to be fasting, but. You don't know what the need is. Food, water, whatever you drink. If you think you're going to have candlelight or you want to be prepared, you'll need some kind of cooler if you want your items cold. I mean, that's all I can say. Three days, three days, three days. In addition, uh, another thing, and I was talking to Alfredo, the Lord told him about that too, is... If you know that darkness has fallen or you see it start dimming because the roar of lights are going to happen first. And let me clarify that. For, for two hours, they're going to be reported all over the world, approximately. But they start in, in like a 48-hour window. But I can't say who's going to see them for the longest. But at that last two hours, we're going to know right around 
this is it. But you're also going to start seeing the sun and the moon. You know, the sun, if you're in the sun, moon, all that start to dim. It's, it's like a dimmer, but it dims quickly. Do you see all those aurora lights? And if, my my recommendation, you ask the Lord Jesus Christ, is this it? Does you have a relationship? You're going to know. Get inside. Fill your bathtub up. Fill your bathtub up. For those of you that want to flush your toilet. You might want to fill up one of your sinks in the, in the kitchen. Clean it real well and have it in case you need to boil water, have water. Well, as if you have a propane, you know, anything like that. Be, you know, be try to try to think these things through. Ask the Lord. It's like like for a disaster. How would you prepare for a disaster? Fill up your bathtub. You got water to flush the toilet. You gotta think of these things. I didn't think of it. Lord told me. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. In some areas, if you're in cold weather, because we know this way this weather is going. Have extra blankets or have heavy coats because for three days without heat, depending on where you're at, that might make a difference. You know, you it the first and foremost thing is to pray though and ask Jesus Christ to lead you how you need to prepare. It's recommended the windows and, and the doors be locked, windows taped up. That's not to keep the demons from breaking in. They're going to be drawn by sin, which means also candlelight. Because if you're in candlelight, my understanding, then your heart was not totally ready. And there's some kind of sin, unrepentant sin in there. They're going to be drawn to the candlelight and the light. Sin is the factor that draws them. But if you are in a home with a child of God that has a supernatural light, what is Goshen? The land of Goshen is where is the part of e where the children of Israel resided in the land of Egypt. That's why the Lord says he's Goshen in their hearts. The blood of Jesus applied. The blood of Jesus applied is what allows for the electricity or that candlelight. It is him saying, you know, this is mine. That you're, he sealed you with his blood. You need to have a plan in the place with your family or somebody, like if you have children in school. Again, because I don't know, we're, we cover the whole world. Some kind of plan to where if they need to get home, your children or something like that, um, even family members, because if you're on the road and these things start happening, And you can't make it home. Get into a building. Get into a bathroom. Get into a store. Get into or hide in your car. Do not stay out. I'm going to read. I didn't know it's going to be this. The dream I published in December of 2022 about the darkness. I just, I just told it. I didn't read all of it. But I asked the Lord, let me see if I can find it, because I saw what happens. And the thing is, you are told to stay inside. The, the children of Israel were, were told to stay inside. So if you're caught outside, sane or sinner, you're open game to be shredded apart. It doesn't mean you will not go to heaven. It just means that because we're entering the time to where the enemy is going to have the ability more so to kill the children of God. We're entering into the period where Antichrist rises in full. And it, it doesn't mean that God can't protect us. It means you need to be obedient to what he's warned you and told you about. There's consequences for your actions. There, there is good and bad regardless. Uh, Vicky, if I may, um, I would like to add yes. something. Yes, sir. Uh, 
one other recommendation. If you could record a small video on your phones, one minute long, so when this starts to happen, when you see the lights, you can send them to all of your contacts, your family members, warning them this is coming, be ready. Just a, a quick, small recap of what we've uh, spoken here. That could save a lot of lives. That could bring a lot of people into the kingdom. Have it ready when, when it's time, just send it, send it over. If we still have phone communication and internet, you should be able to send it out. That is very good. Very good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had not thought it. See, that's why we're a body. <laughs> the body. Okay. I would recommend also keep food and drink in your car. Uh, you might want Kleenexes too or, or wipes. I don't know. Um, I can't tell you what you can do about having to, you know, relieve yourself, but what, life is better than having a mess to clean up later. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm reading off what we have on the internet and then we're going to try to go more on that. Again, a lot of this is being obedient. Being obedient to what the Lord Jesus Christ has told us and warned us. Okay, let me explain more about the doors and windows. The reason being, depending on whether the children are here or not, and the reason I say that, we know Rachel's weeping soon. A child might go to the window when she hears grandma calling for her. A sinner might try to go to the window or a lukewarm or backslidden might try to get up in the night if they manage to sleep at all. I don't know, you know, because in the house it's different than those in stark terror and total darkness. I don't know if there'll be any sleeping or not. These are just little things when I was asking the Lord, he said, anybody getting up? Yeah, any, so there might be some resting, there might not be. Again, it's looking outside and seeing the evil, the horrendous evil. If you're in candlelight or don't know if you'll have your light, I do recommend that you somehow block your windows. And it doesn't have to be, like a lady asked, what about putting wood up? You're not, the demons cannot come in or the, the Nephilim where there is light unless you open the door because that's an invitation or you open a window. It's an invitation. It's a legal access granted to them. That's why if the doors are locked and the windows, that anybody gets that. And my recommendation is, is if you're a child of God and you're in candlelight, and you know this is coming, and you've realized you're in candlelight, you're going to repent. So if you get somebody that hears, because you're still in candlelight, hears that's in your home and say, uh, their daughter, their daughter yelling out to them. They're going to panic. They're going to panic and they're going to do their best to try to get to that door because that's what deception is. Before you start trying to tackle them, you need to take authority in Jesus Christ over them and bind that demon inside them. Bind fear, bind the panic, and ask the Holy Spirit how to lead you. That's something we be praying about now in case something like that happens or pray that something like that does not happen. A lot of our ability in the lord he gives us understanding is to pray in advance okay lord this is a possibility i'm asking you take care show me how to pray about this or just in advance i ask that you send angels and go ahead and clear this out or work on their hearts or minds whoever's going to be here so that this does not happen effective precision prayer that's a part of all of it Do you want me to share that more?
I received a word this morning. Judith, Fred, and Freddie and I have been praying about Rachel weeping. Those of you who wonder what Rachel weeping is, Rachel weeping is where it talks about Rachel is weeping for her children that are no longer there. It is a time, it talks about Matthew and Jeremiah when destruction was for, for the children. But I'm going to read you. This came forth this morning. Like I said, I've been seeking. I've not been on the internet much <clears throat> because i am been in prayer over all this. Asking the Lord to lead and guide. 3, 12, 24 at 8, 46 a.m. And I was interceding. And I heard Rachel weeps twice. 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 First time got my attention. But I might just went in prayer more. The darkness brings the weeping of Rachel for her children. Rachel weeps twice. One before and one because of my return. Now, granted, he did not say it's going to be in the darkness. It could be before the darkness, in the darkness. One before I return. One because of my return, as those children who were not ready made themselves so and became bride made ready. Rachel weeps, some in great sorrow, some in great joy, realizing their blessed children do not have to endure all that is coming and has come to your world. The time of Rachel's weeping is now. You take that to the Lord Jesus Christ to prayer. There's a lot of people asking me about that. And that's what I, that's the answer that I have received. The time of Rachel weeping is my understanding is the time when the Lord comes and gets the innocent children that are not at the age of accountability and those like-minded, meaning those that's in adult bodies or older bodies that have still the, the childlike mind. The innocence, the, the beautiful minded. They're not a burden to society. They are beautiful, wonderful souls. And the Lord is close to them. Hallelujah. Alfredo, do you have anything to add right now? Uh, well, what you were saying about uh, Rachel weeping, um, what we understand according to what we've been praying about is uh, that children may not experience the, the full three days of darkness. Uh, it may happen, and please pray about this because uh, we've been praying, we don't know this for sure, uh, but the, the children may be taken away, being raptured before or during the first day of darkness, and um, so there is going to be weeping because uh, people who don't know about, don't know about it are going to be looking for their children. Um, but since we are informed, please don't, uh, stress about it. God is in control. Uh, the children belong to God. And, uh, that's the reason he's trying to prevent them to go through all that, uh, through, through those three days, which are going to be, um, I don't even know how to. Put it but uh horrendous yes horrendous to say the least because yeah, it's even for the children of god that's living right it is going to be a horrible time because you're going to still feel that presence of all that evil being released but you're protected you're protected even the children of israel knew what was going on. They they knew. They were warned. They knew. And and you know how like at a funeral how the atmosphere is subdued. You know, it's because there's mourning, there's loss, and you know, and, but it's just a, a very subdued atmosphere. And you know how when you feel something you know, and you're uncomfortable because you know, or you, you're in a room and you know there's somebody evil in there, and you just, but you know you're protected. 
They'll amplify that when all hell is released and the Nephilim come down and the fallen angels fall. We are going to feel it in our spirit, but we're going to know we're protected because the blood of Jesus covers us. So it's not that we're just going to be in our little homes in the light and, and just, you know, life is normal as far as we're called into war. And this is going to be a time. Most those of you that will have light will already know how to war and pray. I say that because the Lord calls those whose hearts pure before them, who, who live and, and want to please him, who repent often, who seek him into war, into prayer. And when I say war, it just means prayer, okay? Prayer. Prayer is how we war. It doesn't mean you may praise anymore. You can pray five minutes, ten minutes, hours. It does not matter. It's the heart, the condition of the heart, and the sincerity. My son doesn't pray as long as me, but he's just as sincere. What does that mean? We all are called different. But it is a time to get the word of God into. It is a time you should be preparing yourself now. Because if you have somebody unsaved or backslidden, it is your time to reach them. Because again, I am hearing, whether it's immediate, whether it's a few days, that the destroyer is coming then. What does that mean? The destroyer comes. Let's go to Exodus. I think it's 10. I think it's 11. And actually this time it'll be more than one because they're covering the whole world. Exodus 11. The final place. Thank you. Well, he's on top of it, ain't he? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Where do we want to start, Lord? I'm going to go to verse 3. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, wherever the man of Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of, the, of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne and upon the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill and all the firstborn in the beast. And there shall be a great cry through all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. And against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know that the Lord doth put different a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. All right, now we're going to go to chapter 12. All right, verse 11. I want to point out something. They ate the Passover ready. Ready. Not in dress, not casually dressed. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on, your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. In other words, you're still being prepared. You're, you're prepared. You're prepared. 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Here's the difference. 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses. Well, our temple is a body of, of the Holy Spirit. Our temple is the house of the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Okay, the Lord has spoke to me in great deal on this. Again, you take everything to Jesus Christ yourself and ask for discernment. Your three questions. When the destroyer passes over, anybody that is unsaved will be affected. 
anybody that has Jesus Christ in their heart and is living right, my understanding, even if they're the firstborn of a family line, they will not be killed. Their seeds and seed, 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 their seed line, their family line, from that blood down is protected by promises. Now, the only exception may be is if a child or someone has blasphemed the Holy Spirit or maybe in witchcraft. I don't know. I hadn't got, I hadn't got an answer on that. But that covering of Jesus' blood on your heart and the promises, if you've ever looked up the many promises in scripture to your seed and seed line, apply. And it's mercy. So take that to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. So that's why in the darkness, because you don't know, if you don't know if that person's a first firstborn or not, regardless, it is a time to prepare yourself to be able to reach and talk and share the gift of salvation. You have a captive audience. It's time if you have put it off. If you have put it off. If you've been ashamed or afraid to speak up. Afraid of offending someone. You're going to have to set that aside. This is the time. Now Lord Jesus is there anything else? Because I know there's some, some questions and all. One question I, um, I, I have a lot of people, just to reiterate, what about the unsaved that wants to go outside or want to do that or wants to go to work? The whole world is going to stop for three days unless you're more demon DNA than human. The Nephilim with more DN, demon DNA, I mean, more fallen angel DNA, I should say, have the ability to be in the outer darkness. There will be no working. There will be no banks running. There will be everything is going to be supernaturally shut down, except for the children of God with their lights. Um, there will be some activity I know that can be done by the kingdom of darkness to bring down the Nephilim. But then again, it's only allowed to fulfill the end time days. What all that is, I don't know, because what I saw coming down in that dream was not in full control. <laughs> because God has a final say. He has a final say. Freddie, let's kind of look through the questions that had been asked. Okay, we have, um, Armida has a hand up. Armida. Go ahead. Hello, and, and thank you for this. My question is, I have a big family, and I have unbelievers, which really has me pretty upset. I mean, it really tugs at my heart. And my son's living with his girlfriend, and they have two children. And I'm asking them all to come to my home. Um, my home, I don't believe, will, will house everybody. So my garage is hooked to my home. You know, there's a door. So will my garage be considered as one with my home? Will they be safe there if I pray for them and I anoint the whole garage as well? I, I'm, I have a lot of concerns about it, you know. I, Right, and my understanding is your property is covered in the blood where you live. And if that's connected to your home, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And do you have any advice to where to start reading the Bible when this is happening, or do we just pray to him? I pray in a heavenly language, which... um I know that is going to be very important, but is there any Bible that you want us to start on or just take it to the Lord? You would have to take to to the Lord because the Lord knows the condition and where each person is at. Okay. But if you do need to, to explain the darkness, again, that's Exodus, Exodus 10, 21 through 23, to show them that it has happened in the past. I wrote it down. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vicki. You have no idea what a blessing you are. It's all Jesus Christ. 
Monica. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. So I just wanted to um, remind everybody to get olive oil and ask, put it in your hands and ask the Lord to anoint it and then go through every single wall, window, door uh, to anoint the house um, as well as your animals. That's something that the Lord has spoken to me through a couple of decades already. That whenever evil comes, we need to anoint the animals as well, anoint ourselves, anoint our anoint our family members um, those who are prayer warriors he has said to me to just be by myself to not get distracted because he wants me to focus on warring in the spirit throughout all the time i believe that it's important to be in fast complete fast as well for those three days just water and if you really can't handle just water then have a little bit of fruit juice but definitely try not to get distracted and cover your family. But this is a time where he really needs us, the warriors, to focus in praying and intercede for all those souls. Yes, I agree. And um, I would actually recommend now and just anoint your animals because we live in a very evil world. I anoint my house. You know, I don't do it every single day, but I do it when the Lord impresses me. But as soon as I found I was moving into this apartment, I anointed it before I moved in, prayed over it. But when you're anointing your animals, dedicate them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, everything you have should be dedicated to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and, and olive oil, anointing oil, there you go. All right. Now, there were some questions popping up, Freddie. Yeah, there is a, there are some questions in the chat. Um one of them is about batteries, if they're gonna work or if cars are gonna run. Let's go to the next one. I'm gonna pray about that. Okay. And then um it says uh my husband is my husband is a lukewarm Christian, so I'm re I'm a repenting Christians. Christian, sorry, will I only have candlelight in my home? due to his condition no 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 um the condition the light is on condition of a believer of jesus christ being in the home the business wherever you're located at now as far as like a a, a business building it may be just your section that may have light i don't know but your presence is what brings that light because jesus christ is the light Um, what I'm hearing as far as a car running, the Lord is the, how do you want me to say that, Lord? Carbon monoxide fumes. It's best not to be running a car during that time. And I, I know there's something to do with the exhaust or something, but. Okay, and then. We have another uh, question. What about only children? I come from a long line and I have only one daughter. She's not saved, but does not live with us. If you're saved, and your daughter's not saved. As far as when the destroyer comes, she should fall under that protection. Unless again, like she's under... You know, witchcraft as far as the destroyer, as far as the light, if she is not in that home, she will not have light. Because the light is Jesus Christ. The light is his blood applied. So, for example, now, both my children are saved, praise the Lord. But if, if my daughter wasn't saved in her apartment, even though I'm saved here in this apartment, she would not have light where the blessings flow in the seed line is where it keeps your seed line from being terminated. The destroyer from killing off your line is by the blood of Jesus, by, by that continuation of your line promised. That's again, you'll need to look up the promises to your seed. Children are called seed and seed seed in the KJV. I pray and hope that answers that now. Uh, Miss Terry, 
Thank you, Vicki. A um, couple of questions I have is, uh, will the Lord supernaturally help the animals that are in your house um, as far as, you know, having to relieve themselves? <laughs> will he take care of that? Uh, or do we need to put down papers? Um, the other question is, you know, my family, only my sister and I are really um, one with the Lord, as you say, and they don't believe us. They think we're crazy with all this stuff. And so what do I do if they don't allow me to, you know, because uh, I'm living with a son and his and wife and grandkids. Um, they don't believe us. You know, my sister and I talked to, to our whole family members and everything. They don't believe us about this is coming. They think we're crazy. They, you know, trying to board up stuff and where I'm living, you know, I, I don't, you know, if they don't allow me to do that or allow me to get the grandkids or, you know. Right. I, guess I understand. It, okay. You know, Let's start with that first, then we'll get with the animals. The Lord is about to show he is, he's going to make his presence known. My recommendation, as far as if they will not let you, like, tape up the windows or something, have it ready on hand. You don't have to do it yet. Once that starts happening and it starts falling and they see, it's going to make a believer a lot of them. And, and they're going to be wanting to go ahead and get those taped up. That's what the Lord has showed me in um, instances. When that darkness starts falling, when those lights show up and the darkness and they start feeling that evil because you can still pray and ask the Lord. Now, if you're in Kindle, if you're in full light, you shouldn't be having the mimicking demons, you no know, voices. That's my understanding. But if you end up in candlelight, if they won't let you have it ready so you can as soon as they, because they will feel that, that terror. They will feel the demons. They will feel the darkness to some point. You will protect them to some point. My understanding, because they, they don't have that full influence. But they're going to know something's going on. And if you've already warned them, they're going to have that that knowledge Lord is going to utilize those seeds that's been put in there. He's you're not warning in vain. Isaiah 55 11 says his word shall go forth and shall accomplish all that he pleases, all that he sets it out to do. Which means you're not you're not planting unfruitful seeds. So have it ready though. I mean I would recommend what I was going to do here. If I had to, if I had unsaved, but my son saved, pray the Lord. I had already taped up. I cut two big black garbage bags of lawn. When I had taped them up, made sure they'd fit the size on the outside. Had tape ready and you just kind of stuck them by my bed here. And, you know, to where I would just have the tape nearby and tape it up at that time. Because I knew he would understand that, hey, mom's not crazy anymore. <laughs> and, and did I understand you correctly that even if we have our electricity and light, we still need to cover up the windows. Because my where I'm living, they have no curtains in there. <laughs> and I'm living in a 16 by 24 room. I have no windows in my room. I'm down in the basement. But upstairs, they have no curtains anywhere. Um, I'm hoping my faith saves them. <laughs> you know that. Um, the thing is, they're going to, if they have no curtains, they're going to notice that the darkness it's unnatural that everything it will look like the whole world is shut down and the whole world will be shut down the holy spirit lead me on how to tell this correctly in jesus christ's name my understanding is when they see that darkness most likely they're going to run down to your place with no windows that that was my inner because feeling gonna, from the spirit that 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 this is where we need to be down in this room with no windows. <laughs> they're they're going to be terrified and they're going to want to be near you because they're going to they're going to feel that peace of God in you, and see that's a big part of it too. You have the peace of God with you too. Thank you. Um, as for, you're welcome. As far as the animals, here's what I have learned: the Lord will do the supernatural, but we have to do our part. So you're going to want poopy pads. And you're gonna want, you will have to take care of those animals. Okay. That is my understanding. 
you know, Thank you do you. his, he's doing his part, but you got to do your part. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for answering and Holy Spirit. I appreciate it. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have any more questions? Um, there are a few in the chat. Um, it says, uh, will the unsaved become aggressive? There's that possibility because of the terror. And then again, they may become subdued. That's something you need to be praying against now. If they're in your home and you have a supernatural light, most likely they will not become aggressive. Lord, am I telling you correctly? But if you have candlelight, then they're still having some because there was sin in that house when it first started. You can repent. I think you're still going to be in candlelight because of your actions. I don't know. But that's my understanding so far. Please. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind this in this trying to come into my internet in Jesus Christ's name. I apologize for it. She said my internet was unstable. Well, guess what? Father God, I ask you stable it in Jesus Christ's name. But when you have somebody in candlelight, they're going to hear those voices. You might hear screams at a neighbor's house. They might, you know, they may become aggressive. Because a lot of people act different in fear and they're battling fear. But if you are a child of God and you know that's fear, bind that spirit. We know spirit is a fear. For God has not given us a, the, mm -hmm. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7 identifies fear as what it is. All right. Um, Don, I'll get to you in just one moment. I want to answer one question. I see up to what age can mother dedicate a child to the Lord? I dedicated mine in the womb. You can do it anytime. Do the candles need to be? White, just unscented is all that I have heard. All right, Miss Donna. Um, do they do they have to be candles? Miss Donna, what is your question? We, oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, does it have to be candles, yes. or could you use olive oil and wicks, like oil lamps? That would still be a candle. Um, if it's made in like a, a candle, I don't know why the Lord has said candles, but I always hear candles. But if you make like um, the oil with the wick, that is considered a candle unless it's, you put it into a container. So that, um, my understanding, Lord, would that be acceptable? Lord? If it's considered a candle, it is considered acceptable. Again, I don't know why the Lord has said by candlelight. I just that's the instructions I have got from the beginning. Candlelight or supernatural light. All right. Where are we at, Alfredo? Judith? Uh, the color of the candles and then... Um... Good says, I read in the Bible that when you fast to anoint yourself with olive oil. Well, it's not a question, but a comment. And then Maria says, does the scripture that the believing wife covers the unbelieving husband apply in this case? It does, because he's going to have that if he's with you, he's going to have that, that sanctity and that protection of the blood of Jesus upon your heart. And the blood of Jesus and, and that light because of you. But that also is extended to your children if they're in the home. Whoever's in your home or your business or your car. You know, I'm saying home as just the location, okay? So if I just say home, I mean the location. Whoever is in that location with you. They have that protection through Jesus Christ because of you. 
but also understand that's those you're supposed to, to reach. That's those who the Lord has put in your path. And it's time to step up, man up, and do what we're called to do. I'm talking to myself too. I don't know if I'm going to have people here or not. All I know is I'm preparing myself to, you know, it, with all these preparations, my main focus is preparing myself. Lord, make me ready to be able to, to answer the questions if anybody has any questions, to be able to lead them to you as their Lord and Savior. That's my number one focus. As it should be all of us. Because in the end, the eternal soul is what's important. That's what's important. And we know it's the most important thing if both the devil and Father God are fighting for it. One wants you to spend for every eternity in perfect love, joy, peace, never have to deal with war, evil, murder of children. And the other one wants you to spend torment with them forever because they have to. I'm going to reach all I can in Jesus Christ's name. And with his help, not only just reach them, I want to see them accept the Lord. You know, the verse in, in John 14, 12, I believe it is where it says, and greater things than this shall ye do. Jesus did a lot of mighty things. He's, he's God. To me, that is leading somebody to Jesus Christ. And seeing them accept him, that change come over them. That is the greatest thing we can do. Praise the Lord. All right. Okay, so the next question is, uh, what about the homeless people? Thank you, Lord. That's been heavy on my heart. I have been praying for the Lord to send them somewhere. They're not aware. If somebody does not pray for them, for the Lord to move, move and to you know, push them, direct them somewhere to safety, then they're not going to make it. My heart is for all people, but I have a special place for homeless people. I mean, because I mean, I see how they're done. Now, some are there by choice, some are there not by choice. And We're calling to reach them all. So as it stands, unless they have a place of safety, they're not going to make it through the darkness. And that's why prayer is important to cover all people. All right. Kim, your question. Forgive me. Can you hear me? Yes. Forgive my nervousness. Um, Sister Vicki, uh, I'm in charge of a lot of children, my own. <laughs> and uh, Bless and you. a lot of grandchildren. And, um, and so we're just, we've been following for a long time. God's appointed times. And, uh, and so when your video first came out in January concerning three days, three nights, and uh, or I'm not sure of the video, but that's when you're, you're seeing and vision concerning that, that, uh, you know, I had first noticed the timings because of Isaiah 66, 23, um, concerning the new moons, which apparently was about the same day within a day or so of that when your vision came. And so going through your vision, I had seen that, that uh, you know, the three, when you look up and see a moon, it's obviously a full moon, it's not a new moon. And so, so I'd seen that within two weeks they had started. Well, today is also a new moon and it'll be the start of the third new moon since the vision. And of course, that in two weeks will be the full moon. And so that's why my, why my question earlier, and forgive me for uh, causing a distraction by my question. So, so the next full moon will be within two weeks or will be two weeks away. 
And this year, of course, is, uh, you know, everything changes all the time, it seems like, from year to year. And we always get in trouble with everybody, it seems like. But the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, the beef harvest in Israel is is early this year. And, and so today is actually Happy New Year. And, and I'm just uh, wondering if um, these timings, even praying about them for quite a while, you know, it's like, you know, before the third moon is full, these things would come. Now, of course, it's a dream, it's a vision. And I would like to know that you know, to establish the months, like, are they literal? Do you believe that it is a literal period of time or a period of time that's, that's given by symbol? And, and I keep telling my family and of course, all my friends who think that we're crazy anyway, but they continue to listen. And, and so everybody seems to be starting to get ready for this. And I'm just wondering if if you if you believe with your prayers and your answers and hearing directly whether these periods of times are literal and whether within two weeks this is going to become a real thing. Lord, how do I answer that? The three full moons are literal space of time. But I'm not at liberty to say when that first moon starts because you, you got to seek the Lord. But it is one moon, two moon, three moon. Excuse me just one moment. I've got somebody knocking on my door. Not let me mute. I apologize for that. What a revelation. The Lord just spoke to my son and confirmed something. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, Miriam. Please unmute yourself. Okay, there we go. I know we're talking about these three days are, and at the same time, I don't know what you think about this. Um, you know, there's this eclipse coming in April on April 8th that is going to form the X portion of the eclipse that happened. The last annual full total eclipse was in 2017, apparently. And this is gonna form an X right over the center of the United States. It's gonna go through Dallas and you know up over to the Northeast corner from the Southwest. And at the same time on the same day, I, I read this recently that all the planets, including the sun and the moon are going to be in alignment. They're gonna be in a straight line. And I was thinking about that and I thought, you know, we know from scripture God gave us the sun and the moon and the stars, you know, as signs to us in the heavens. And I'm thinking with the X being formed over the United States and also all the planets in alignment, including the sun and the moon. And they said they had never happened before and they didn't think it would ever happen again. Um, that this is a sign from the Lord of judgment on the United States. I don't know if you've seen or or um, 
known about this. I know you know a lot. God tells you what he wants you to know. And if this is at any relation to these three days of darkness that are coming. All right, Lord. As far as the X itself, it's just reaffirming the bullseye on America. We're already going down. That makes sense to me. <laughs> that I mean, we um, know we're due for it, and we deserve it. Right, and it's just the bullseye being seen. What the Lord has been telling all of us: America is going down. It's Babylon. It's going down. The alignments; those are things to watch. Alignments, eclipse, and all. And to me, I have not actually talked to him a lot about this because he's focused me on the other. But it is. All this is marking the great day of the Lord. That's what we're seeing. All these things that's coming. When I asked the Lord, I said, what is this darkness? Because everything I pull up is the great day of the Lord when he has me studying. He said, it's the announcement of my great day of the Lord. Now, the great day of the Lord covers many days. It's covering many days. It ends with the millennium reign. The great day of the Lord. Because Jesus, still his day. Finishing it with the grand finale, a thousand years with him. The great day of the Lord. The only thing as far as anything to do with Exodus is a dream that I had, but it was Xing the whole world. I got her. For the great day of the Lord. I'm not, here's the thing too. I'm not one that studies the stars. And I don't either. <laughs> I, just, right. yeah. I don't even study the feasts very often. Well, I've looked at them a little bit because the Lord said, when you start, when I'm, I'm, I do not want you trying to match things up. So it just recently I've been able, now I knew about Purim because, you know, it's in Esther and, and some of the others, but to identify the stars, which I've always wanted to study, but he's told me no, to look at the feast days and to know, but now the calendars, as far as just looking at like the Julian calendar, the Jewish calendar, the even the Iranian, all these calendars. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good at them. That's how, what he has me look at. But I do keep up with full moons and new moons because there's things that he's told me like the dream. You know, three moons till darkness. You You start taking notice. But in, until he leads me into a direction, I don't study. I don't, because I don't want my own thoughts influencing what, you know. And if I, and I, I love, I love history. And I, well, I've always been bad, but Bible history. If I could, <clears throat> excuse me, if I could, I would study. But every time I try to study the feast, he says, no, daughter. Your mind will want to try to line everything up around those feasts. You listen to me. So let's, you know, excuse me. Thank you. Well, I think it. Him. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, he wants you focused and listening to him and not being distracted by other things. And I totally, yes. that. and that's how kind of I feel. I just feel right now my life is just on his word and on him. And that's where I need to be. Yes. And I, it's not, I, I recommend anybody though that the Lord leads it and you can study. It's important to understand these things. The feast days, the moons and all, you know, if the Lord leads, I'm just, I, I know he, and this is why he's always had me. Like even with the, with the Nephilim, the fallen angels mating and with the, until he led me, I was, because I heard this and I heard that. I'm like, Lord, I'm putting this on the shelf. Because I know your truth will come out. And then I started having dreams about the giants and the Nephilim. And he got me down there. I started breaking down doing the, the word search. in Greek Hebrew meanings. And found the truth. Because the Lord will lead you to the truth. Holy Spirit will lead you to the truth. John 14, 26. All right. And we're getting quite a few messages coming. So let's, Alfredo, let's look and see if, if we can... If any of them is asking the same thing, might help. 
Uh, yeah, there is one. Uh, it says my daughters are lukewarm and I'm also married to unbelievers. Uh, sister, will there be will they be protected because I'm in repentance? If they're in your home, yes, they will. But again, it depends on whether you're in candlelight or whether you're in supernatural, I'm going, I'm going to call it supernatural light because I don't know what else to call it. It's going to be provided by Father God. It's going to make a difference on how they're affected, you know, how much they hear. If they're candlelight again, they're going to hear the mimicking voices possibly, hear the screams. I tell you, it's horrendous. It's, well, it sounds like all hell has been released, and that's basically what is coming. Okay. It's your, your Revelation 6 where death is released and, and all hell is following the seal. Well, they're going at full gate now. Okay, I'm sorry, Alfredo. That's fine. Uh, we have another question. Um, it says, I, I am married to my wife who has left me for another man and lives with him now and has a child with him without divorcing me, do I have responsibility towards her? And how does God see my marriage commitment towards her? Okay, if she, if she committed adultery, but you're still married, you still have that legal tie. You are free actually to get divorced and marry again. But her actions have put her in that sin. In this situation, you're going to have to, to pray, Lord Jesus, how do you want me to do this? You're not responsible for other people's actions. We all make our choices. We all make our choices and we have to live with those choices. The thing is with Jesus Christ, he will help us even with the bad ones. With this situation, are you asking concerning inside the darkness or just in your life? Because in the darkness, if they are not with a believer, whether it's your wife living in sin, whether it's your daughter, your brother, you know, if they're not with somebody with the light, Jesus Christ, they're going to be in the darkness. So I guess I'm I'm trying to find out, you know, if if you're talking about in the light, they're old enough, they're gonna their responsibility. So the next question is um what will happen after the three days of darkness? Well, sometime after the darkness lifts, the destroyer comes. The destroyer comes. That's the next thing. Unless there's something pieces in between, I do not. You know, because again, I only get pieces. Everybody gets pieces. When the darkness lifts, you're alive. First thing I do is get on my knees and praise the Lord. We know, we only know what the Lord has revealed. And that is three days of darkness is definitely coming. Three days of darkness. And then it will lift. But the world will be changed. Every person on this earth will be affected in this earth, in the water. Every person will be affected one way or the other. There'll be people that's died, maybe even in your homes. I mean, in, you know, unsaved, <clears throat> maybe even in somebody with candlelight, don't know. But everybody's going to be affected because it shuts the world down for three days. It's a time of call to repentance. If you reject it, Jesus Christ, you're going to be more hardened to him. Still doesn't mean you're not savable if you haven't blessed the Holy Spirit. It just, you're making it a lot more difficult. For me, I, I, I try to understand how can somebody get, make it through the darkness without repenting, but there will be. We know that. We know that. Hi, uh, Alfredo.
And and again, Alfredo, fill in you and Judith if you uh, want to answer something. Absolutely. Uh, there is another question. It says, uh, with the windows covered, will it be safe to check if darkness is over or will we just know? I would say that we will know the darkness is going to be so thick and so heavy that uh, it's going to be, be very clear when it's over. Yes, because it's it's going to be in the whole atmosphere. And, and when it lifts, that oppression, and it's still going to be heavy with evil, but that oppressive darkness, my understanding is you as a child of God will know. And if you're in prayer that whole time, as you should be, you will know. Uh, and then we have another question. Will there be any other events pr preceding the three days of darkness other than the auroras? All I have been told about is the auroras, the coming lights. Uh, let me see. With windows cover, we will know the darkness is covered. It's over. Yeah, we already addressed that one. Uh, will people die? My understanding is yes. People will die in the darkness. Hearts will fail them for fear. Minds will be snapped. Um, Maria says, is it just me or do you guys feel the presence of the Lord over this meeting? I assure you, we invited him multiple times. <laughs> He is welcome here. Jesus Christ, you are welcome here anytime. Amen. Uh, okay. Do we only cover the windows of the room we will be in or is it the entire house regardless? And um, will their carnage of the outside happen to be visible to us after the three days? So the what now? And the after the uh, so all the uh, will the carnage of the outside happenings be visible to us after the three days? As far as the windows, you'll need to pray because each house is different. And I know there's some people that have real big houses and you know um real high ceilings. Me personally. If I had multi rooms and I knew I was going to stay in one room, I would focus on that. But you, you're going to have to ask the Lord to lead you in each situation. Again, it's going to depend on who comes into your home. The Lord knows the situation. You're going to see the destruction and things outside. It's not being cleaned up. The world is going to be changed. Yeah, um, and also it's our understanding the uh, covering the windows is not for the dark to come inside to prevent the darkness, but it's also for so we can avoid being tempted to look to look outside. So that's what we be more more mindful of trying to not not be tempted. What's going on? Peeking under you know the the, the curtains or or anything. And just focusing praying. Yeah, focusing on, on praying, fasting, and praising the Lord because uh, this is the, the day of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's a good point because just in our human nature, we want to look out and see what's going on. And you don't, you do not want to see, I'm telling you, you do not want to see it. Because if, if even us that war in the spirit, even us praying just praying it's just praying but have seen supernatural i see supernatural things all the time and it's not a brag it's just the lord has opened my eyes to see it and it's not pretty and the first time i saw it it was very shocking you know it distressed me greatly but the lord lovingly led me through that you take seeing a whole bunch at one time even on a child of god that hasn't is not used to their physical part seeing that it shocks the system be wise in all you do let the lord lead you and how to prepare 
We can only give you recommendations, but in the end, you have to take everything to Jesus Christ and let him tell you what you need to do. That's all we can do is just. All right. Yeah. So if I may interject a little bit also, um, I think we, we all feel like a little bit crazy when we talk to other brothers and sisters about the things to come. And there is a reason sometimes why God has blinded that. Uh, but in my opinion, once the darkness is over, or even during the darkness, our purposes are going to be revealed. So no matter what happens after, we are going to know exactly why we are here. And, uh, and if it happens that we are still here and people have not been saved, during or, or after this will be a time of great harvest so we we have to be ready yes yes uh you know, yeah sorry go ahead i was gonna say but you know the thing is that as the bride of christ as a church as a body we should be ready at all times amen uh kim did we answer your question fully or do you still have Anything else? I was just uh, thinking my great concern is for my family afterwards. Um, I know that really hard times are coming. And so I was wondering if, if um, Sister Vicki, do you believe that this is the cutting out of the stone, Jesus, Jesus, uh, judgment on his church and the whole world or or is this the beginning of of the great stone growing into the great mountain big mountain that fills the whole earth and and i'm just wondering what uh you know i mean it's exciting and yet it's absolutely horrifying that we have to go through this all you know but but it's exciting that uh we're, we're getting to that point where we're looking forward to seeing Jesus face again. Yes. How do you want me to answer this, Lord? Okay. We all know we're not appointed into wrath. Multiple scriptures. And and when I when I study scripture, that means at least the vials and the bowls. What I'm seeing is coming, we are entering the great tribulation. Not the great tribulation, the, the great day of the Lord. According to scripture, that starts, the six seals open, but that starts that pouring out. Once a seal is open, the Lord determines when, what comes out of it. Because when you look at the seals, and he pointed this out to me in the dream I had, and, and it's something new. The four seals, when the first two are open, they're set out and running. According to scripture, they went forth, this one out, but the other two, they were open, but they were not sent out yet. So it doesn't mean when that's still open, doesn't mean everything's happening at that exact moment. But we are entering nonstop judgment. Church, world, Babylon, it's here. It's here. And again, you'll have to just ask the Lord Jesus Christ to, to discern it. But when you start studying the great day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, it's called so many different things. When you start studying that, you're going to see that's exactly, it's called um, day of destruction from the Almighty, day of the Lord's vengeance from his indignation, day coming that shall soon burn, flaming fire taking vengeance. This is just a few of them. This is the day of the Lord. Day of wrath, the approaching day, desolation to come, day of visitation, day of, of calamity, all these things. Even in all that, we're not to fear. We are not to fear. We are the children of God. We have accepted Jesus Christ into our Lord as our Lord and Savior. And the, the word of God says, as Matthew 24 unfolds, and it's unfolded, 
The last thing I was looking for was the part in verse 10 about everybody being offended. We have arrived. They're offended at everything. So it says, look up for your redemption draweth not in all this. At some point before those vials are poured out, Jesus Christ is coming back for his bride. And he keeps telling me, I'm coming after mine. I'm coming after mine. We don't know the day or the hour. Father God does. But when you start looking at some of the stuff that's going to happen, you may not call it wrath, but it very well looks like wrath. You know? I feel like, you know, the Lord said persecution was still coming. Persecution is trying and testing. Three days of darkness is going to do it, and it's going to shape, shape up many of his children that was not ready. He's making them bride ready. This is a purging. This is a refining. This is a get ready now. You're going to be left behind moment. That's what I hear. When he's coming, I know it's soon. He tells me soon. I know it's soon because he's talking about other things that proceed, like the 144,000 having to be activated. They're activated back. You know, all these things. And to fill in with the, the line, line, God's timeline, and, and the clock piece to watch, Israel. That's God's timepiece. That's, you know, when you start filling all that in, look up. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And it's not going to be a little entrance. It's going to be great power and the glory of Father. <laughs> the glory of Father God all around him. A glorious, powerful moment. How you like that, kingdom of darkness? <laughs> Praise God. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you so much, Sister Vicki. You're welcome. <laughs> Get me excited talking about the Lord's return. You know, I know what I'm called to do, but I pray daily, come get my brothers and sisters. Come get my brothers and sisters. <laughs> All right. All right, Alfredo, sir. Okay. Uh, next question. It says, if you are in the house with an unsaved person and they repent, will the demons still be attracted to the home? Home, sorry. Okay. Here, here. Now this, again, you all have to take this to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. My understanding so far, because I'm still getting questions, you know, trying to seek in the Lord, is you will still be in candlelight. But if everybody in that household is saved, then there will be no sin for the demons to be attracted to. There will be no sin. The sin is what's drawing them. The, the, more, the more I study it, sin is what attracts because sin is of them the enemy it's like a magnet that's the best way to know how to it's like a magnet that attracts them so if that person repents and is no more unsaved then what i believe is the angels of god are going to protect you going to going to protect you know any more of that from occurring Okay, and our next question is, will there be bodies outside after darkness? There might be pieces of bodies. You know, I, I don't, I can't say yes or no totally. But from what I've seen, you're talking about fallen angels and demons that's been bound for thousands of our years. And they are enraged when they come out. So if you're caught out, those will be shredded. And that's all I've seen shredded. I can't say it's not like they just rip the, you know, your, what is it, jugular vein and then drop it. They shred it, the person. The two, I, the two I've seen in visions and dreams, two different ones, they shredded the person. So there may be bodies and there may not. I don't know. And, um, now the next question it says the raptured children will their physical bodies be left behind to bury no it'd be like being rapture caught up it will be the translating of the body from the old to the new 
just like when Jesus comes and raptures the bride. And this is all part of it. And, and you know, I'm still praying about this. Rapture might be, it's it's all in that one day. It starts with the children. Uh, the next question, it says, how about the timing of the rapture in relation to the three days of darkness? I'm not at liberty to speak on that one. I'll just tell you right off. That's something you'll have to seek the Lord. The Lord on, I cannot tell you anything more on that. And a similar question. I've heard that people will change in the darkness. The Christians, they will be light. Is this the rapture? Again, I cannot tell you when exactly the rapture will be. Um, I have not. The Lord has not said, I'm coming in the, in the darkness. So I cannot. That's something you'll have to continue to seek the Lord. Okay, next question. Hello, Ms. Vicky, and thank you for uh, this open forum teaching. God bless you. I have had such a hard time concentrating in my prayer time. I am concerned that my prayers will be hindered during the three days. I try to take my thoughts captive, but I am very concerned. Okay, anytime you have anything that's trying to hinder like that, it falls under the strong man of confusion. Anything to do with your mind. you And pray about this. Take your Lord discern. You want to bind the spirit of confusion. And I say sub-demons. Because it is an all-out attack by the confusion demon. Bind it. Cast it into the abyss. And then you can even go back behind it. And pray and ask for the sound mind of Christ to be released in you. Second Timothy 1 7. Anything, anything of the mind, brain fog, forgetfulness. All, all things to do with the mind like that. It is a strong man of confusion. So it and they they will set out to try to hinder you in your prayers and such like. So bind confusion. And another one I usually bind. Doubt. I don't want doubt hindering me. In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for war. Um, next question. It says, will the transformation of the elect uh, to bring in the harvest happen during the three days? Again, I can't tell you it's going to happen in the three days of darkness or not. The only thing closely is I know somewhere around this time, the children will be, the, the innocent children that have not reached the age of accountability. And the age of accountability, it's different for each person. There's no set time. I got saved when I was five. It's when that child understands, has a good understanding of right and wrong. You know, and so what, when they're doing something bad, they understand I'm doing something bad. All right. Okay. Uh, next question. With what do, we, do I cover my windows? Again, what I recommend is like black garbage bags, lawn trash bags, and just because they're bigger and you can cut them open and just tape them. Unless the Lord leads you with cardboard, whatever you got on hand, sheets, you know, thumbtack the sheets up. It's it's whatever, you know, because not all of us have a lot of money. Use what you can use. There's not a lot of money cost in thumbtacks if you have sheets or a roll of tape and the garbage bags or, or several of the cheaper garbage bags. However, but I would recommend having free tape. If you have to tape them together, already pre-taped and just fold it up until that time. If if you do something like the garbage bags. Okay. Uh, the next question it says: I have camping sterno stoves. Will these will those work during uh, these to heat food? Okay. 
I will have to pray on that, Lord. Will you allow your children with candlelight? Because if they're in. I've got to pray on that one. I will have to pray on that because he's wanting to talk to me a little more on it. And I will make Lord willing post in the community pages of YouTube first and second channel. And I will also put it in um, Telegram and Facebook. Me or Freddie, one of us will post it, Lord willing. I don't. I don't have a full answer on that. Okay, next question. Uh, Ms. Vicky, do you believe this will happen this year? It feels like it in the spirit. But I can't give you a definite yes or no because even if, if up to this point, if the Lord's saying yes, 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 and he's moved by mercy and was to change it, I cannot give you an exact date because of Amos 7. Amos 7, and then Jonah. Because, again, because of that, the way it, it feels and the way I'm hearing, it sounds like yes this year. But again, I can't say 100% sure because we have a merciful, wonderful God. But with him saying that, his great day has started. Do the research on that. And then seek the Lord Jesus Christ for your personal confirmation one way or the other. Because yeah, you know, well, I just he has not given me anything to release other than what I already have as far as any time. But again, you we are all called to seek the Lord and ask him. Is it again? You have to have that personal relationship. You cannot just expect other people to get your answers for you. You have got to be able to stand on with the Lord Jesus Christ with all that's coming, especially if you're left behind in a prayer. You're not. You have that. That's your lifeline. It should be your lifeline now. But when life and death, every action, every word depends on you following Jesus Christ exactly. Okay, right, so. our next question. The doctor has me on medication and one of them is for anxiety. Will that affect my salvation? Will I uh, will I be a blemished bride? A blemished bride. It does not affect your salvation, but it does affect you live in victorious in Jesus Christ. It is an oppression of the enemy. You need deliverance. Um, next question. What is the age of accountability for children? All right, we've done answered that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, can you clarify what a fixed moon is? Is it a full moon or a new moon or something else? Thank you. A fixed moon, just depending on the word given, is a new moon or a full moon. A fixed moon, a set unmoving fixed moon in the sky. Again, I'm going to refer you back to the dream, three moons till darkness, but we have already established and spoken when I speak with Kim. It is a full moon because it can be seen. New moon, totally dark. Please pray about it. Take the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, next question. Will believers die from destruction and uh, things these days? In the days to come, yes. Christians are going to die too. Believers are going to die too. And a lot of that is mercy. It really is. But it rains on the just and on the unjust. That is what the word of God says. So when judgment falls, it falls on all. And there, there's a point in the man wants a time to die. And then the judgment. The main thing is to have your heart ready regardless. We don't know what, unless the Lord leads or reveals it, what's laid out for you. 
and again i will say this again a lot of a lot a lot of times when we don't understand when a disaster strikes or destruction and christians die too it is god's mercy and it could be the lord saying i want you in heaven now there's just so many things we don't understand about god he's magnificent but the casualties will be all people. Uh, our next question is, is the bride and the 144 the same thing? The 144 are part of the bride. They have to be bride ready. They are called. They are called. They're part, the bride is part of the church. It's just bride is those who are making themselves ready. Those who are, are willing to do all we are set on Jesus Christ and are determined to be there. That's that's what you long for. You know, you should be longing to be in heaven, to be spending time with Father God and Jesus Christ. To be able to, I mean, the other added benefits, I mean, heaven's supposed to be beautiful. Past people that's gone on, fringe benefits. Jesus Christ, Father God, that's what it's all about. Okay, uh, next question. Vicky, did the Lord speak to you about the October 7th, 2023 invasion of Israel before it happened or since then? How is it related to the end of days? I'm not. Not been able to share a lot openly about that. He has spoken to me about it some. And it is building up for the Gog Magog War. And that is in Ezekiel 38 and 39. I recommend that you seek the Lord and read that. And also go back to Revelation. Read them. I mean, there's so much. You Your, your basis for everything is this word. Is this word. But as you can see, Israel, the, the countries are lining up to surround for that Gog Magog war. Okay. Um, how can I get a copy of this discussion? I was just telling my ladies Bible study about the three days of darkness, and they were curious to know more. Uh, God willing, we'll be uploading it. We'll pray about it. But most likely, uh, yes, we are recording it. We are recording it. Um, it may have to, may not go out immediately because it may have to be downsized, converted to fit on some of the files and stuff. Maybe some things, but um, it's 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 free to all. We just the reason the Lord had us do such means making the three questions because He wanted to ensure what He wanted out got out uninterrupted. And I have been in Zoom meetings before. Before I knew fully to ask the three questions where we were interrupted by, you know, satanic prayers, all that stuff. And um, this is God said, Tom, we have nothing to hide. We're just getting the information out to those that are here and then we will share it. It is to ensure you're uninterrupted and you get what the Lord has sent. It's for us too. You know, even as we, we're conversing, the Lord reaffirms and, you know, it helps us too. Okay. Um, we have our next question. Do you believe Taiwan will be hit before or after the three days of darkness? I'm not at liberty to say. I, you're going to get that on some things or some things, even if I know it, I am not at liberty to say. It means the Lord has not released me to say. So I cannot, and I apologize. No, I don't apologize. I can't say on that. Uh, next question. Is water baptism required for the bride of Christ? Salvation's required. Salvation, accepting Jesus Christ into your heart and living a holy life. And that's through him. You do that by being obedient to his word, reading, fasting, praying, praising, worshiping, doing these things, walking in obedience. 
because when you get saved, you get that robe of righteousness. It's up to you to keep that clean through the word of God. And Jesus will help you. Be ye holy as I am holy is, is a requirement. And it's possible it would not be in there. But we do it by leaning on Jesus Christ. We do it by asking him to help us. We do it by his strength. And we do it by asking the Holy Spirit to search us. It is possible. Water baptism. It does say in one place that you can receive the baptizing of the Holy Spirit by being baptized. It is a symbol. It is a declaration you're making to the world. When you go down in that water, that you are putting away the old man. And you are coming up a new creation in Jesus Christ. And that making that statement, even to yourself, to me, it, it was a very pivotal moment because I came out making that statement. And it just, I felt joy. I felt, you know, because I was able to not only confess them in my heart, I was able to make an open statement to the world. Jesus Christ is my Lord. But it's not a requirement to get into heaven or be part of the bride. Okay, our next question. Is there such thing as second exodus? I have not studied on that or looked at that, but I know that I've heard people mention Second Exodus as referring to people leaving America. Now, I may be wrong, but I have had people mention that. I have not studied on Second Exodus. I'm going to go ahead and ask, answer this one question. There are a lot of people asking me, are, we supposed to, are people called to leave the U.S.? Some are, some aren't. When it says um, to get out of Babylon, that's literal and spiritual. Definitely spiritual. Separate yourself. Some people are called to leave and some are called to stay. And some people can't leave. It is the spiritual separation that's important, most of all. And being obedient where he tells you. But, and Alfredo, do you know anything about the second exodus? Because it's not something he's brought up to me besides that. Uh, I have heard that it may be part of the uh, 144 uh, ministry relocating uh, Christians supernaturally around the world. Okay. And uh, I'll see. I have heard about that then. Go ahead. But but we'll have to pray about it because uh, I, I've heard it in a couple of uh, prophecies. Uh, we just want to make sure, pray about it. Uh, this may be the case. Yes. If you are referring to Second Exodus as that, all I will say is the 144,000 will have that part to play as part of their role. But we are going to pray and seek the Lord on it, like he said. Okay, our next question is... Uh, uh, Ms. Vicky, I'm not sure if I, uh, I understand correct correctly. To be considered the bride of Christ, I need to be delivered from anxiety and depression. To live a victorious life in Jesus Christ, you would need to be delivered from anxiety and depression. You're saved when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And as long as you keep that part clean, keep your life clean of sin, I mean, that's oppression. That's an attacks of the enemy upon you. It, it's a, it will not keep you from being a bride of Christ, being ready in Jesus Christ. If your heart is ready in your mind and you've done it, but that is still oppression and attacks of the enemy that is causing you to not live a victorious life in Jesus Christ. And then we have uh, Monica. Hi, I just want to ask for permission first, if it's okay to say I do deliverances and it just like burns my heart every time I hear somebody that needs deliverance and has anxiety because I struggle with that a lot. The Lord uses me in mighty ways um, to be able to deliver his children. So if it's okay with Ms. Vicky, I will share my information through the chat group 
and then you can contact me. I don't charge anything because the Lord has taught me to do everything by love and free. But I am more than willing to help everybody who is struggling with anything that needs deliverance because there's nothing more glorious than living free through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. What we'll do is what I recommend, and it's not this is why we have to do everything. You can put the information in, but everybody, you pray and ask the Lord if this is the right you need to do. You have to ask Jesus Christ on everything. And again, I'm going to say this because I have to say and try the spirits. You try the spirits before whatever the Lord leads you, whatever decision, whatever decision the Lord leads you is when you follow. Because each person has each person assigned for whatever. So, yes, you may put that in there. But again, everybody pray about it. Let the Lord lead you. And then we have our next question. Are the 144,000 already marked? or sealed and do they know who they are all i can say on that i know he's been marking them sealing them he said they are sealed but in heaven but then you know it's got to come down to when we get to um chapter seven in revelation we know that um, John had asked a question. We end up, chapter 6 ends with the wrath of the Lord near time at the great day of the Lord. And 7 talks about the sealing of the saints. But then you hear at the very beginning, though, it talks about the four corners of the wind. I believe that's 7. Let me make sure. It's on you have... Go ahead, go ahead. It's on, on the screen. Oh. oh, okay. Let me move my chat. I got it up there right now. All right, so we have standing on the four corners of the wind, of the earth. And the Lord, pray about that. North, south, east, west, pivotal points where all winds go out, the corners. So holding the four winds of the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Verse 2. And I saw another angel descending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt them, hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. So first he's answering John's, you know, with the the with this, the angels are stopped from doing the destruction on the earth before the 144,000 are sealed. My understanding, and please pray about this, is those four angels are the first four trumpet judgments. Destruction on the earth. When you look at the destruction, again, take it to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. All I know is before for what they're called to do. They're going to be sealed before the trumpets start being released. So that. I believe and my understanding is they're already in the process if they're not sealed already. Does everybody know? I believe that. The Lord will either either. Let you know you'll have the feeling. A lot of people know already. Somebody may tell them that you still need to seek Jesus Christ for his approval or, or whatever. And and the 144,000 just have Jewish ancestral DNA, my understanding. It does not mean you're, you're all equal. We're all equal. It's just and the ancestral DNA has qualified you for, for this role. But they are also set apart in the fact that they go through rigorous battles beforehand to prepare them for what they're called to do. Because anything that you have in this life, you go through, is going to help you in what you're called to do as 144,000. 
even though you're going to have supernatural all. So I don't know if I answered that well. Alfredo, <laughs> did I answer that? No, I, I, yeah, I think I think it was yeah, it was it was great. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let me ask. How many more questions do we have? Uh, there are about four or five, maybe. Okay, let's do these four or five, and then we're going to need to wrap it up because you got responsibilities. He's got a business and kids, and and we're going to need to to um, put an end to this, or they'll keep coming. Okay, uh, next question, it says, I was baptized as a child before I was saved. Do I need to get baptized again? If you want to make that declaration publicly to the world after you accept Jesus Christ, then I would recommend yes. Um, in the area where I am, we are using mainly solar power for light lighting. Will our lights go off during the three days of darkness, or we will miraculous, miraculously have light just like those using electricity? If you are a child of God and your heart is right, you will have the light, even though we say electricity, so it's going to be miraculous light for his children. So it really doesn't pin, depend on whether it's, he's going to cause, my understanding, he's going to cause whatever form of light you use to work. Whether it's solar, because there's no, no light showing, whether it's solar, whether it's electrical grid, whatever, that is my understanding. Yes. Now, next question, and this may be for Monica. Do you schedule deliverances? If so, how do you schedule? I don't know if you put your info in the chat. Uh, and the next one, could you tell us for sure that the three days will occur before the full moon of March? No, I cannot. You will have to seek the Lord on that. Um. I'll be praying about this question, of course, but if my entire family is not saved and will not talk religion, quote unquote, with me, why might the Lord be moving me far away from my firstborn now? He, my daughter, and my mother and sister are in three different states. What do you recommend I do for them specifically regarding the three days of darkness? Warn them. All you can do is warn them so when they see it happen, those words of warning will come back. And if you've told them they need to get inside, they need to and then let them get inside. It's going to be their decision. But at that time, Jesus Christ can deal with them. If if they understand what's happening from where you have warned them and they get inside, don't you think they'll be calling on God, calling on Jesus Christ? But you got to give them the information so they will know how. You know, if you don't, because a lot of people, they're going to see the beautiful lights, you know, and, and that's the thing. They're beautiful. They're deadly. And they'll want to take pictures and they're going to be all, you know, if they're not aware of what it truly means. Then they're going to be in the dark. Or even, here's the thing too, even some Christians who are lukewarm that has lights, they may sense something's evil, but if they have not been warned, don't know. If they don't get down and seek the Lord Jesus Christ, what's really going on? That may be some of our tribulation saints. I don't know. Something to pray about. Okay, and uh, we have our last question. <clears throat> if internet social media is no longer available due to national grid or satellite issues, does this mean that messages given by the Lord can no longer be delivered to or accessed by the bride as is currently happening? Has the Lord talked to you, Sister Vicky, about this? Actually, he has. <laughs> Rest assured, even if it has to be by 
angel travel. God is not going to abandon his people. He has ways of connecting. He has ways. You know, the, the enemy thinks they're smart with their underground network and all these things that they do. God sees it all. Do you not think that they've copied, trying to copy his? The Lord will ensure. And it's awful, though, still going to be a time for you to ensure your relationship is good so you can hear straight from him, from the Holy Spirit. But there is strength and unity. He will connect his people. And it's good to have those three questions, especially in the days coming. Because when they take that Bible, you're not going to have those to know that's how you discern. Okay, so that was our, let me see if there's one more. When the Lord, when the Lord seals this 144, okay. Yeah. It says when the Lord seals the 144,000 or the saints, is it accompanied by a physic by any physical symptoms or sensations? No, not really. Um, I, I, I got sealed. See this up here, this up raised. Now I'm not saying anybody's gonna look that way, but when I was questioning the Lord and he told me I'd been sealed already this starts popping out and it's in several it, it goes back a little bit so there may be a definite sign and there may not be this is my this is this is all I can say this is why I ended up with right here see how it pops out right here and um yeah I I probably got my seal different than most people I got I I got a kiss it's in a dream where he kissed me on the forehead one time. But I question him, you know, how do we know when we're sealed? How do we know when we're sealed? And um, I said, I want to see it. You know, that's me. I want to see it, Lord. So this, and you can go back in the videos and you can see it's there. It don't always show up. I've been in a lot of prayer and fasting. It seems like the more I pray, the more I fast, the more it pops out. But I would like to think everybody gets to see it, but I don't know because of the days ahead and what's coming. I don't know. But did I feel anything? Well, I'm not a normal person and it's not that there's no respect to person. It's just a circumstance in the dream. I hope that answers your question. Yes. And the, the question about the uh, deliverance is, uh, one of our sisters is asking if you do, uh, Vicky, if you do deliverances. I just do them over the internet as in sending you the information, but I send the prayer with it because, Lord, how do I say this? Unless the Lord tells me specifically, I get requests for deliverances every single day. And I'm not saying I'm above that. It's just the Lord has called me into this. The thing is, every child of God is called into deliverance. None of us are above the other. We are all commissioned to do that. Lay hands on the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. You know, we, we are all called in some form or another. The thing is, First and foremost, Holy Spirit, help me. Before you proceed in anything like that, make sure your heart is right with Jesus Christ. Make sure there's no hidden agreements you haven't broken with the enemy. And make sure you're led by the Holy Spirit. I have done deliverances. I have... I have cast out demons, not a bragging. It's just, that's what we're called to do. I have sent out where the people can pray, but I put my agreement with it. And I, what I do is say, in, you know, when you pray this in faith, believing, I'm praying and asking the Lord to have my prayers that I prayed agree with you and this to be activated. 
and there have been reports coming back how people have been delivered, people have been set free, because it's not us, it's the Word of God. It's utilizing that, utilizing that Word of God in the name of Jesus, because the power lies in Jesus Christ. So, doing one-on-one, -on -one, I have been instructed to always have somebody with me. So it's not something I normally do unless I, I do it more in person than, than I have over the internet. But again, that's all in the Lord's hands. It's um I spend the majority of my time praying and fasting in the presence of the Lord. Um, even around I have a I have an everyday life. But I ensure I get up early if I have to. I stay up late if whatever I have to do to ensure I have my time with Father God and Jesus Christ. And that that's the main priority. And when you do that, when you're dealing with, with anxiety and depression, because I dealt with it for 20 years, and it is a spirit, you can bind that, those spirits, but also start praying for the joy of the Lord to be restored. Psalms 51. Because depression zaps your joy. And the joy of the Lord, you know, when you got saved, that joy restored to me the joy of thy salvation. Of when the moment I got saved, he will do it if you ask. But again, pray, seek the Lord how you need to proceed. Because that life, I know personally, is a life of bondage. It is a life of bondage when you are bound by depression and anxiety. But who the sun sets free is free indeed. And that's what we're called to be. We're called to be children of God in a victorious life, more than conquerors. By the word of our testimony, by the word of our testimony. Our word of our testimony, our life, how we live, how we react. Telling about the things that the Lord's done for us. Praising the Lord. The word of our testimony. All right. Alfredo, sir. I think we uh, are done with the questions. Um, I would like just to uh, finish by saying... Uh, all of these warnings, all of these dreams, all of these prophecies are not, you know, for us to get in fear. The only fear is the fear to the Lord, but not to fear the devil, not to fear Satan. If uh, the Lord has been gracious to warn us, that's because there is a purpose in our life. If you have not found, quote unquote, the right church, the right pastor, the right leader, that means also God is separating you to spend time with, with him. Sometimes we rely on pastors and churches to tell us where to go, what to do, but we have to seek the Lord ourselves. And um, we have to trust God Father. We have to trust Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And also remember, a third of the um, fallen angels were cast down but there, there are there's still two thirds, which is the good angels, which are going to be working with us side by side. So just yes. by numbers, we we are bigger, <laughs> and by power, Jesus Christ has overcome. Yes, yes, and Jesus Christ controls the, the angels and commands the fallen angels what they can or cannot do, because He has all power. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to end this. Let's end it with some prayer. Again, I'm all about prayer. <laughs> In Jesus Christ's name. No need none of that wicked stuff anymore. I have to nullify and resend it back all the time. But I want to end it with prayer. And then we're going to ask everybody to leave the meeting. Alfredo, I'd like you to stay just a moment. You and Judas, please. Okay, so let's pray. And let's glorify the Lord Jesus Christ together. Let's give him something worthy. Let it be a sweet, fragrant perfume. Fragrance to the Lord God instead of all this garbage being thrown up at him all the time. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, Jesus Christ, we come to you in your name.
And we thank you and praise you for this uninterrupted meeting, Lord. We thank you mostly for your, oh, hallelujah, your holy sweet presence that's here. Your powerful presence that's here. We give you praise. Now, Lord, let these words come into us. Your truth settle in us. Lord, drive each one to discern and try everything, everything according to your word so deception does not come in. And Lord, send this out wherever and help us to be a vessel. Whatever you need us to say, let us speak. Give us wisdom to know when to speak and when to refrain. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord. Work on the hearts of all those that we speak to, or you're going to send our way now. Soften them, Lord. Open their eyes and their ears to the truth. Open our eyes further in our ears to the truth to only hear you, Father God, unmanipulated as you speak. We bind all powers of the kingdom of darkness, meaning physical, spiritual, and combined, and cancel and nullify, rescind. All evil communications in all existence known to God, because God, Father God, you're in everything. You exist everywhere. You fill the heavens and the earth. You are God Almighty that sits on the throne ruling and reigning. You are mighty in power. But you're also justice. You're also our father, our husband, our maker. We praise you. Jesus Christ, my love, we praise you. We give you praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Now I bless the people. I ask you encourage them, Lord. Stir in their hearts, God. Stir in their hearts. Stir in their hearts. A greater yearning and a longing to serve you, God. Clear their minds, Lord. All spirits of confusion and doubt we bind in Jesus Christ's name and cast them into the abyss, Lord. We stand in the power united, united in Jesus Christ and united. We're strong. We're strong anyways, but we're mighty. We're mighty in you, Jesus, and as your body working together and not against. Let everything we do glorify you, Father God. According to John 14, 14, 13, 14, 14, 14. Jesus Christ, please do this and please answer all these prayer requests, Lord. And don't let any be deceived or let astray in any way. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless. Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. The sound of victory, Kim. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus Christ, have your way, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, Vicky, I'm going to end the meeting and send you another link. Okay. I got that message, sir. Thank Perfect. you. Bye-bye, okay. everybody. Stay under the blood. <laughs>